So we have, you know, 20 minutes to solve privacy here. Uh, my hope is we sort of go through some of the big bills and give you guys a sense of where the debate is in Washington. But I just wanted to start off on privacy, sort of a statement of principles. What, when you think of a pri privacy legislation, particularly federal privacy legislation, you know, what do you want that bill to represent, Minyan? I would like consumers to be empowered. I would like regulators uh, to have a framework. Uh, and I think Congress is responsible or, or should be responsible for laying that out. Uh, because unless you want a 50 state plus territory patchwork of, uh, of, of rules and regulations, uh, that's the only default um, that, that, that we can, um, that we need. That's what we need um, and, and that's what the public wants, I believe. Michael? Yeah, a few things. Um, one, our members, we represent websites and apps that you use um, and hopefully love every day. And uh, we really want to see- uh, Internet companies, internet Facebook, companies. Google. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we're pushing hard for a federal privacy law. Um, you know, the key here is that people should have control over your data and then not be surprised by how it's being used or who's using it on or offline. Um, it's really important that people have the control back. So right now, um, I know a lot of the attention is, is put on our companies and that's fine, um, but we want to make sure that uh, a new privacy law is something that people can understand, is unified across all 50 states, having this confusing patchwork I don't think so, um, serves anybody well. And it should be on and offline. You think about um, your information, who has it, um, offline companies, you want to make sure that you have privacy there. Online companies, you want to make sure you have privacy. Um, and also for a lot of the companies that you don't even know exist or have your data. You know, think about the thousands of data brokers that are using your information without your knowledge or your benefit in any possible way. You should have control over that data too. Uh, it, why, why are the internet companies now saying, yes, we want, you know, re regulation? I mean, it's sort of, is it just a sign of weakness or what? Can you explain to people why you're willing to say? I think people recognize uh, that we're being sandwiched. <laughs> and when I say that, I mean there are international pressures with GTBR. Uh, there are um, uh, local pressures, you know, with the states, you know, California, Washington, and the like. And in the middle of being sandwiched is, is the rest of us. Um, and uh, being pressured, uh, it's Congress. Uh, and, uh, and, and federal agencies, like my old agencies. So I, I really think um, all of us, because of all of the things that we know, uh, we're feeling the pressure and we need a standard um, that, uh, is, that, that people understand uh, that is user-friendly uh, because you know, the, the consumer is going to be uh, expected uh, to look out for him or herself more so than ever before, uh, and, and you cannot push that off to government even though, even if government uh, provides a framework or, 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 or the, um, you know, the template for that. Right. So companies feeling a little sandwiched, would you accept that? Yeah, I mean, look, our, our companies um, care a lot about what their, their users think and they want to be respons responsive and responsible to that. Um, and if you look even at you know, any of the platforms that you use now, uh, even over the last few months or few years, the privacy settings and the ease to change your settings on a lot of the apps and websites they use have evolved in a, in a way I think that has been very uh, customer centric, where you can have more transparency, where you can decide. Um, we think that you should be able to delete your accounts or delete your data um, if you, you're not happy with the services that you're using. Uh, again, that should be you know, both on and offline and, and companies are trying to be responsive to that as, as Congress and other regulators look to um, enact new laws. So let's, let's talk about Europe. Obvi you know, GDPR has been in effect more than a year. That sort of set the stage for this debate. I mean, what, what's your view on the impact of those rules in the United States and how much they're sort of shaping the debate sort of a year out of implementation? I think uh, we noticed it. Hello. I know, I have um, to sign in and say, oh, I, I got my cookies. That's, that's all I see no. of it. Is there and, more? And of course, um, we're influenced by it, but um, I don't want everybody to get so excited that we're going to automatically adopt that. Because um, in terms of the European model or the, the culture, it's much different. They look at data protection and privacy laws through a human rights lens. 
Whereas the U.S., it's more about consumer protections, uh, you, know, uh, you, know, you know, federal trade, you know, those types of uh, uh, policies. So it's not apples to apples that we're looking at, even if some of the principles uh, we might adore. Uh, don't expect, um, uh, you know, any, um, uh, uh, G, you know, don't expect a, a EU a light type right. pro approach into right. We're going to do it our own way. That's very We're going to do right. it our own right. way for better or for worse. Right. For, for better, I hope. <laughs> My, yeah, Michael, anything to add? Well, we, on yeah, that? we I mean, look, in the United States, we've been the leaders in, in technology and innovation, and that's a good thing. And it, it's hard to name um, you know, more than a handful of, of European based global internet companies. Um, and we could spend all day going through all the, the, um, the U.S. companies that are global companies. And so we need a U.S. approach, and we need something that's going to be state of the art, and other places in the world can look to us for leadership. And you also want to do something that does not create a regulatory moat over around existing business models or existing companies. You want to allow for innovation. You want to allow for a model that allows startups and new entrants to um, comply with the regulation without having to hire armies of, of lawyers and, and engineers to just comply with it. And, and uh, that's been one of the, uh, the, maybe the downsides of the GDPR approach is that even news organizations like um, newspapers and some smaller websites have decided they can't do business in Europe because they just can't afford uh, the lawyers and the regulatory experts and the engineering time to comply with that law. And that's not a model I think that we want here where you're just freezing in time the companies that exist today and the way they're doing business. Yep. By the same token, we cannot deny how vulnerable we are. And we cannot deny that the information or what you know about me or that the data that you have procured is not significant. Uh, and, and so that's the, the very, we are, um, we have benefited, um, you know, as Michael mentioned, you know, from, you know, the openness uh, and, um, you know, those uh, platforms and the freedoms in which we um, hold dear. Um, but it has caused us to be way more vulnerable uh, than, than um, I think, um, you know, some of the, um, you know, European, um, you know, you know regulators are, uh, are going to, um, we're just more vulnerable. Yeah. And, and, and so uh, we can't not deny that our very success um, has, 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 brought us to right. this we have, point. We have these huge companies. I mean, there's a lot of anger about them, and you're talking about the expense. I mean, I want to, you know, it, it's interesting that I think some of these regulations, people want to take action against Facebook, Google, Amazon, big companies, and change how they do business, which I, I know you don't love. But at the same time, it's going to cost small businesses. And, you know, you think about, you know, just everybody with a website and how they'll be affected by privacy legislation. I mean, how do you, how do we balance this, you know, Facebook's gotten rich off data, they should pay a lot maybe, or at least be willing to, but some smaller company really can't bear so the burden. I'm not sure if I can articulate this the way in which I'm passionate, you know, allow my passion uh, to, to form words, but I really think sometimes we look at it blank backwards, because my mom would not appreciate <laughs> me saying what the blank was. Um, because I, I really think we're looking at the symptoms yeah. and not the malady. Right. Um, in that uh, we're looking at the things that are, are wrong, but not looking at exactly you know what, what's causing them. I'm going to throw you uh, <laughs> something here. Big business is not the problem. Okay. Uh, big tech is not the problem. Okay. A small startup. Can, um, can thwart competition, you know, it, it can treat your data in any type of way, right. make you more vulnerable, so that is not the issue. Right. The issue is that um, we are, to, to steal from Tom Wheeler, Wheeler and, and others, uh, we are looking at, from a regulatory standpoint, this through a 19th century framework, and we have 21st century challenges. And so the regulatory uh, uh, authorities have not been able to keep pace, and with all due respect, um, our, our, our federal uh, elected officials uh, are not looking at this comprehensively. And right. I have to be careful how I say <laughs> that because I'm related to one. We're, we're <laughs> circling this federal issue. So I love your sandwich metaphor before. I mean, California is a big part of what's maybe going to put pressure on the federal government to do something. Michael, can you explain briefly the California CCPA? You know, there's so many acronyms in this, and then. What, what your view on where that ended up is. It's going to go into effect, I think, at the beginning of next yeah. year. I cannot explain it briefly. And I don't think, <laughs> These I don't are think messy bills. No, uh, California passed um, comprehensive uh, privacy law that goes into effect um, early next year. 
that is, is for, for people in California, and it was done uh, mostly over a long weekend, and they've had to make changes um, in there. Um, we don't think it is uh, the best approach for consumers or, or, or even for, for businesses, obviously. Uh, but the, the main problem for this is that you end up with this patchwork of state laws. And I'm sure you know, in this audience, you know, many of you have friends or coworkers that are in other states, you travel. And so just imagine a world that every state has a different and not necessarily interoperable or compatible privacy scheme. I mean, you may have to have different apps or settings um, as you travel from state to state. As a small business, you have a customer maybe that's shopping in one state, shipping in another state from a supplier in another state. It just becomes so burdensome. Um, and do you, think, is, do you yeah. think your members will apply uh, the California law to every state? So, so here, yeah. So obviously, our larger companies will be able to hire, um, you know, lawyers and engineers, and they'll be able to sort it out. Um, it's going to be a lot more difficult for individuals and consumers, and for small businesses and startups. But it's not the best approach. I mean, this is a um, so bigger companies might be able to segment, and smaller companies. Yeah, might they not. certainly don't like it. But if obviously right. the larger your business yeah. is, the more you're able to dedicate those kind of resources, and others can't. Um, but it really makes no sense having one yeah. state that's able to set that and have it change state by and state. You know, do you have do you have an overall view on California? I mean, it's interesting. I feel like Michael, there were parts of the legislation where it felt like the bill was passed so quickly you didn't get to work. But then other- and they, got, and they got so much wrong. I mean, they did so many things that actually make people less private. Um, the way household data is, is, um, is classified where you can, you can request data from a household and so many different things where it just, it just doesn't even make sense for people. So but, if, a bill is, if, it's, if a bill is longer than one page, you're gonna have complications. Right. So, you know, let, let's, <laughs> let's just, that's on the table, okay, right. that, that's out there. It's a long so, page. <laughs> and, 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 you know, I can't remember the number of pages, but it's well more than, um, you know, one. So, but, but know the frustration of individuals who feel more vulnerable. Right. You know, that, that's at the heart of, um, you know, and, and honestly, it's not over because, I, you know, I, I think there's another ballot initiative that's exactly. going to follow up on that. So, you know, the, the issue for me is that we are too much like ourselves. And what I mean by that, regulators are, 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 are fixated on, on, on their cultural standards. Lawmakers um, have a tendency to water down things that really need to be um, uh, just addressed head on. And until we allow ourselves to um, listen to everybody and, and put something for everybody in whatever it is, right. some type of legislation, we are not going to please anyone. All of us will be more vulnerable. And honestly, um, I am, I, I, I know there was a lot of, um, you know, I'm a really, really optimistic from the last panel. I'm less than optimistic that we're going to get to Nirvana here right. because I just think everyone is just so culturally fixated within their, um, you know, within their, you know, territorial right. norms that I don't know if we, but we, but we need to get there. The um, public demands it. Before, you know, you, you, you alluded to the referendum, California might have sort of an expansion go to the voters sort of beyond the privacy legislation they had. You know, the original bill, and I want to make sure people learn that the, the private right of action has become in the federal bill a big sticking point. Yeah. In California, there was no private right of action. So uh, private right of action is this idea that individuals can sue over the mishandling right. of their data rather than just yielding it to someone like in the federal government, the FTC. Mm -hmm. I mean, do you, do you, are, are you on board with a private right of action or do you think sort of the advocates Mignon need to give up on that, or do you have a... I, I, I am so fearful of articulating uh, there because... <laughs> it's my, a hot my, button. <laughs> yeah, because my head and heart are in two different places yeah. um, there. I understand um, that, you know, consumers should be able, if they have an issue, uh, should be able to, to acknowledge it in the beginning and get resolution in, in, in the end. I don't think anyone will disagree with that. The problem is the details and the applications. And um, I, I just, um, I'm hopeful. Please don't walk out here and say that I'm not hopeful, but I'm doubtful. Yeah, I know, I mean, so now moving on, there are you know, many bills in Congress that have been proposed. I think Senator Wyden, who's a big privacy advocate, did not have this private right of action. Commerce, which is where everyone is very invested in Senate commerce coming up with a privacy uh, rule, that, that's where this is sort of stuck. I mean, Michael, can you Look, sort yeah, of... Yeah, the, the, the enforcement is, is really important, obviously, and accountability for companies is really important, and transparency on, on how data is being used and when there are lapses, there should be transparency on, on who did what and what changes and remedies were done. 
And uh, when you look at a private right of action, I know it's something that the trial lawyers love, yeah. but it's not the best if you're looking to protect people's privacy and make sure that companies are held accountable and that changes are being made when there are lapses or something happens that doesn't meet the law. And typically under the private right of action, there's a lot of suits, there are settlements out of court, and there's no transparency whatsoever of, of what the harms were, what the companies did wrong, and what the remedies were. Opposed, opposed that to um, a model where the, the FTC or some other government agency is enforcing the law and making sure there's accountability. In those cases, it is transparent what the fine is. It is transparent what the harms were. It is transparent what the company yeah, did I mean, wrong and yes. the remedies. And that's what you want. But you to offer a counterpoint to that, I mean, Facebook did pay a $5 billion fine over privacy violations. And I think a lot of privacy advocates would say that FTC lever leverage fine didn't have enough of an impact on the company. Again, but you knew it, that's a lot of money, I think, exactly. for, for anybody. It was, it was clear. It was like what a the, record fine. Yeah, it was, it was it disclosed what the amount is. It was disclosed what, um, what they did wrong. And it, was, and it was disclosed what the remedies and changes they were made. Under a private right of action, you're, you're perfectly right. Under a private right of action, there's no disclosure on any of that stuff. You don't know. But it's additive. Know. It is additive. It may, may, maybe or maybe not. But I'm going back to what I said earlier. Does it fix what's broken? And the, 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 to, to me, the answer clearly is it does not. Right. And so uh, again, we want quick fixes. Fines have not worked. You know, um, protests that right. you know, have not adequately. But those things have not worked. The only thing that will work is for you know companies to, as was uh, affirmed last night, to step up to the plate right. and do a self, take self-regulation seriously for entities like the FCC and the FTC to give themselves or be awarded the tools they need and to follow through right. uh, with that. And honestly, consumers can no longer be passive. Um, you know, they, they, honestly, Cal the California C CCPA, the California rules, you're gonna have to be a real enlightened, informed, and active right. consumer for that to work for you. It is not, the, the law is not just good, you know, in place in 2020 and all is right with the world. Because a lot of these laws are really about giving consumers awareness of what data is being collected and letting them look up what data has been inhaled on them, but it, it doesn't do a lot of the work for but them. But you use the word awareness. Right. And I don't know if it does awareness. Right, exactly. It, it, it enables. Right. It's on, it's on the, uh, you know, it, 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 it's a part of, it's codified. Right. But awareness, who does the, you know, public education campaign? You know, how do people know? What, how hard or how high is the burden in terms of, you know, people reaching out and exercising right. that? It is very expensive and exhaustive to challenge any company. And so getting back to this federal legislation, which is sort of stuck in negotiations, federal preemption is the other big piece of that. I mean, Michael, certainly you guys want preemption. Can you explain that in sort of reg layman's terms here? Sure. sure. Um, the whole point of having a federal privacy law is that you have a federal privacy law that is the law of the land um, and allowing each individual state to do their own thing defeats the purpose of having the one standard that we can all point to and say that's how we govern privacy here in this country regardless of what state I'm in or where I'm doing business and and so I think that's basically right. table state. You do all this negotiation and then yeah. I mean but what's the counter argument? But, but, but on the as a, as a person who who started out in this business as a state regulator um, that is subject to interpretation. Um, you know, all states and uh, all entities are not created equal. Just look at GDPR. You're going to have 28 different interpretations right. by, by that, that DPO or whatever they, that they call it, the reviewing uh, entity. It's, it's not going to be all nice, neat, and seamless. I don't know if it should be all nice, neat, nice, neat and seamless. I think we need an overall framework, but the interpretation, I think, should be in the eyes of the beholders. And um, South Carolina is wired differently from California, which is different from Wyoming, and I don't think it's a stretch for the interpretation to be so. All right, so we have a poll now. We've outlined these two big principles. This might be the wonkier of the poll questions, but you know, it's sort of, do you want this Preemption is part of the bill. Do you want a private right of action? Do you want both? So answer that. I mean, while, while they're sort of tr trying to read that language. I'm how, curious about this. Please weigh in. I'm curious. I'm curious. I mean, it's wonky, so read it. Um, but while they're weighing in, how optimistic are you that federal legislation will come next year? I mean, we have impeachment going on. So even, I mean, 
Wicker and Commerce was basically saying this is a goal of this legislative session to get it before California. California is now coming, you know, this, so that's clearly not happening. How optimistic yeah. are you? I mean, the, the fact that Calif you know, companies are, are spending millions of dollars and people are trying to figure out how to comply with the new law that's coming into effect um, in 2020 and the fact that come November 2020, there's already going to be a new ballot initiative in the state of California that will change the law that's going into effect um, in January, I think just shows and highlights the need for a federal law um, and not having this patchwork and not allowing California just to kind of willy-nilly decide what they want to do every, every year or two years. You mentioned the word ballot, um, and I think that will influence whether something comes out of that because there is a, a big ballot question uh, that we have um, uh, if California this time next year. No, I'm talking about the presidential. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, the administration. And, and all of the I, other I didn't things catch that are going subtlety. on. And so in terms of all of the other things that are going on in this, in, in this universe, I'm doubtful. Yeah, the, Hopeful, but doubtful. I mean, the, your tears to zoom out. Okay, so first of all, people want the big deal. They want both, but they do want private right of action. So that's, that's interesting. Um, but federal preemption, they want the co Congress to solve this problem and have sweeping legislation, but you know, I think the point that you made, the sandwiching, and the idea that the people who want stronger privacy legislation see their, their position growing stronger and so delaying it, I think is a fascinating takeaway. Um, thank you all for giving us your feedback, and thank you both for helping explain this very complicated issue. Thank you. Thank you.